Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com. Today we're taking a closer look at installing and dyno testing the Air Raid Race Cold Air Intake and the Bama RevX Tuner Combo Kit available for your 05 to 09 GT. You should be checking this out for your early S197 if you're looking for a convenient combo kit that's guaranteed with horsepower and torque gains, as well as just a better breathing engine and a RevX tuner that is so easy to use and has a number of really cool features that'll definitely come in handy. Now this particular cold air intake is gonna be a big upgrade under your hood, giving you a better breathing engine, some horsepower and torque gains, of course, but it's also gonna give you a big upgrade for the filter. You're going from that factory paper element filter to a conical Synthaflow oiled filter. It's washable and reusable, very convenient, has a very big upgrade in filtration capabilities and how much cold air it's gonna be pulling in. In addition to that, you're really maximizing its potential with your Octane Tune from Bama. Now this is something that is specifically made for your vehicle and your mods, so whether it be just the cold air intake or say you have a cat back, long tubes, so on and so forth, all that's taken into consideration from Bama, but write it just for your vehicle and you'll see some pretty good results. Now, of course, we established our runs, our baseline number with a bone stock motor, 93 octane in the tank with our factory tune, dynoed it, walked away with about 270 horsepower, 299 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. We then installed our Air Raid race intake and our Bama 93 octane tune combo, ran it again under the same conditions and walked away with about 291 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. That's good for peak gains of 20 horsepower and 11 torque at the rear. Pretty good gains as far as peak is concerned, but curve gains are a lot more impressive. Now we found our curve gains at about 5,600 RPMs, which is toward the top end, a little bit under red line. Now at the top end, we're walking away with 28 horsepower, 27 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheels. We see pretty good gains across the entire RPM band, seeing our max torque at about 4,000 RPMs, which is just in that sweet spot to feel it every day on the streets to make a big difference. So it's definitely something that we can feel. I want you to know that this tuner is gonna come with an 87 street tune and a 93 octane race or performance tune. Now those tunes are gonna take in your air fuel ratio, it's gonna change timing and spark to optimize everything you got going on for your S197. The kit comes in right around 700 bucks, which is definitely gonna save you money if you went to pick up an air intake and a tuner separately. This convenient kit is definitely worthwhile if this is on your radar. Now the install, I'm gonna give everything one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. It's very simple to install. Anybody can tackle it in the driveway at home. And you're enrolled in the Bama Free Tunes for Life program. Now what does that mean? Because it sounds awesome. Basically when you pick this kit up with your Bama tunes, you're automatically enrolled to get free tunes for life as long as you have this tuner and this vehicle comboed. Now basically, every time you wanna make an adjustment to a tune, anytime you pick up an additional mod, you request that new tune, you get it for free, sent to either the cloud wirelessly, or you can download it right in your email from Bama. Very simple stuff, and it's included for free with this combo kit with the Bama tunes. Tools used in this install include an impact gun or a ratchet, extension, eight and 10 millimeter deep sockets, 532nd hex socket, T20 torque socket, and a box cutter or knife. All right, now the first step of the uninstall here is to look over to your left side here where the breather hose is. You're gonna push back on the green clip and pull straight out to disconnect it. On the opposite end here, we're gonna lift up on the red locking tab on our MAF sensor and pinch to disconnect. Next up, grab an eight millimeter socket and an impact gun or a ratchet and we're gonna loosen up the clamp holding the tubing to our throttle body. Once you have that loose, you can see this little retaining tab. Just rotate it over. You should be able to just pull it straight off. Now, right next to our air filter, there's a 10 millimeter bolt holding that whole thing on. We're gonna loosen that up and remove it. At this point, you can just pull off your entire intake in one piece. So we got the factory air box off of our 2006 GT you see behind me. We've got it on the table next to our Air Raid Race cold air intake. And I wanna take you through some of the similarities, but mainly the differences between the two kits. And we're gonna start up front with the most important aspect, which is gonna be our filter. Now, you see, I took the lid off of our factory air box to expose that factory paper element filter. And you can see it's just a night and day difference here. The Air Raid option is a conical Synthaflow filter made of a synthetic nanofiber technology that filters up to two microns of particles, which is just not something you can say for not only the factory paper element, 
but even the common aftermarket cotton gauze filter. So a big upgrade in the realm of the Air Raid filter, and they're known to be one of the more premium options in the category, so we expect them to have that premium quality material. The filtration capabilities of the Air Raid filter is unmatched, and it's also going to be washable and reusable with an oiled filter technology. So being an oiled filter it does require a little more maintenance than a dry filter would, but it does also come with that washable, reusable technology. So basically, when it comes time for routine maintenance, pop it off, wash it, re-oil it, throw it right back in. You don't have to worry about buying up a new one. Next, we have a plastic black, pretty stealthy intake tubing. It's a little bit larger than the factory one you can see here, so it's got a better airflow system going through. It's gonna dissipate heat a little bit better. It's got a built-in housing for the MAF sensor, which will transfer over in just a little bit, and an opening to fit that twin bore throttle body. It's also gonna come with a velocity stack to help streamline the airflow through the filter into the tubing. The heat shield's also a rotor molded plastic, so it's gonna dissipate heat a lot better as well. Comes with weather stripping to make sure it's sealing up underneath of your hood, blocking out excess engine bay heat, pulling in that cold air and keeping it in. Coming with all new silicone couplers as well. Now looking at the factory intake, there's a lot of kinks, a lot of areas for restriction in the airflow, so not gonna be the case with the air raids. We expect a better gain, which is why they claim up to 35 horsepower and 30 torque. So what do you say we assemble our new intake, set the old one aside. The first step here is to transfer over our factory MAF sensor. Now that's held into our factory tubing by two T20 Torx bolts. If you're using an impact gun like I am, make sure it's on its lowest setting and you're not stripping the bolts. We're gonna go ahead and just remove the two T20s. Real slow. Perfect. Slide the MAF sensor out. Set it down. We can put this aside. Now you're gonna take your new Air Raid Race tubing. We're gonna take our factory MAF sensor and we're gonna slide it into the housing slot. Grab those factory T20 Torx bolts, thread them in by hand. Just a couple of threads to get them started. And now we can tighten them down. Remember, you don't want to overdo it and strip them out. Perfect. Next step, we're going to install our hose fitting for our new breather line. That's going to go on the opposite end where your throttle body connects. And you're going to need the rubber grommet included in the kit. This is basically just going to line this little section to make sure there's no air leaks. I'm gonna push it and pinch it into place. Once you have that set in place, grab your fitting. You're basically just gonna push it in. Perfect. Next up, you wanna take your coupler that's gonna go to the velocity stack and the heat shield, as well as a clamp. You wanna insert the clamp over the outlet side. And we're gonna install that on the end of our tubing. Once you have that seated, you want to rotate the clamp upward, grab an 8mm socket, and we're going to tighten that down. Now we can do the coupler for the other side, attaching it to the throttle body. That's the oblong shape here. You want to grab another clamp, set it over the end. This one you'll just stretch and install that onto this side. All right. Once you stretch it into place, you want to rotate your clamp where you want it. I like to have the bolt head you know, right around the side of your hose fitting. You can tighten it down. Next up, grab your heat shield and your weather stripping, and you're basically gonna line the top end of it here, and that's what's gonna seal in underneath of your hood. It's got little metal strips on the bottom to help just squeeze it into place. There you go. Next up, we're gonna take our heat shield and our velocity stack, and we're gonna install this using the three washers and the three 532nd hex bolts included in the kit. You're gonna install it from the inside going outward. So as you can see, there are three holes. You're gonna line them up to the three holes around this circle here. You just rotate it until they line up. Grab one of the bolts with the washers, set it into place. Basically, just going to try to thread them in by hand. It can be a little tricky trying to get them to line up. Okay. 
All right, once you have them threaded in by hand, grab the 532nd hex socket and tighten them down again. Just use the light setting on your impact gun or a ratchet. Now you want to take out the rubber grommet and the metal spacer, this metal plug from your factory heat shield. We're going to take the rubber grommet and we're going to install it into the open pre-drilled hole on our new heat shield. You just pinch it, work it all the way in there, just like we did with the hose fitting on our new air aid tubing. Once that's taken care of, take that metal plunger, push it right back down. Now when we install this into our vehicle, we're going to use the metal spacer provided in the kit and we're basically going to just slide it underneath and put the factory bolt through. Now, this doesn't mount anywhere, so we're gonna hold off on that until installation. Now this step, guys, you can do in car, but since we're on the table, we're already set up, might as well keep going. Grab your filter, put the large clamp right over the end there, and we're gonna slide it onto the velocity stack. Now, this does go on a certain way. Find this metal strip, that's gonna be facing down. Put that on. Basically, you just wanna slide up that clamp Grab your 8mm socket and you're going to tighten it down. Alright, the next step is to grab your factory breather line off of your GT and set it on the table. What we basically have to do is take the 3 8 new line included in the kit and transfer over the fittings to the new one. Now, I will say you can avoid cutting the, the line on your factory one essentially. If you want to go out and buy hose clamps, you can use a very small hose clamp to clamp them down to the fittings without cutting if you want to be able to put this back to stock. I will say, however, once you transfer over these fittings, you can still use this going back to stock. It's really all personal preference. And what we're going to do is show you what it would be like if you did do the cutting. So you want to grab a knife, and you're going to make one slit, essentially, down this line where the fitting connects, pop them out on both sides, transfer them over. Go right down the edge here. You don't have to go over it a couple times. It's pretty hard plastic. There you go, pop the fitting out, Get the same thing for the other side. Now, the other side we already cut, so I should be able to just pull it out again. Perfect. Now we're going to transfer those over to the new one. All right, so basically take your hose and your old fittings, you're just going to push them in. Now the good thing is, on the fittings, they're ribbed, so you don't need any clamp. Once they sit in there, they're already nice and tight. Perfect. All right, next we're putting our air aid tubing back on the table and we're just gonna lay clamps over the other end of each of the couplers. We're not gonna tighten them down yet. We're just gonna like, set them in place. All right, at this point, we can grab our heat shield and install that first. Now for the installation of the heat shield, we have to remove this 10 millimeter bolt from the side. We're gonna take our 10 socket and pop it off, but it is immediately gonna get reused. All right, so now we can drop our heat shield into place. Take the spacer included in the kit, we're just gonna put it right on over the factory location, and we're gonna use that factory 10 millimeter bolt to bolt it down to the side there. Once you have that threaded in with the spacer, you can put the other one right on the front here. Grab your 10 millimeter socket and tighten it down. Next up, you can grab your tubing, and we're gonna attach it to the throttle body and to the velocity stack on the outside of your filter. Snap it onto that velocity stack, then rotate it toward your throttle body. All right, now she's a tight fit for sure, but once you get it on, grab your eight millimeter socket and just tighten down that last clamp. All right, couple steps left. Grab your factory sensor harness, Basically just gonna route that onto your sensor, clip it down, drop the locking tab. Now we can do our breather hose. Now the breather hose, you might need to start rotating this to get it in the right direction. Essentially, you're gonna clip it onto that factory location on your head, and then this part on to your fitting. Now guys, once your intake is done with the installation, you can grab your OBD2 harness included in your Bama RevX tuner kit, and we're gonna plug this portion into the OBD2 slot underneath the driver's side dashboard, which on your 05 to 09 is gonna be on the left-hand side. So just find that, plug it right in, and the other end's gonna go right into our tuner. 
just like that. All right, now we can get the tuning. Now once you have this plugged in, grab your key, put it in your ignition, and just turn the accessories on. Turn the ignition on, do not start your engine. At this point, go to the main menu of your device, and we're gonna go right into programming our vehicle from the main menu. So click Program Vehicle, confirm your VIN, now it'll ask you if you want to update your device. If you haven't done so already, you want to hit continue and go through the device updating. We've already done that, so I'm going to hit skip. That might ask you if you want to connect to Wi-Fi as well, which it will be requiring if you're going to do it wirelessly, so you want to connect your Wi-Fi network as well. Cloud Sync. If your tuner, in this case Bama, sent your files to the cloud, you want to hit continue and sync them from the cloud to your device. Again, we've already done that process but it's really just as simple as hitting continue, it'll connect to the cloud, select the file, download. Just a quick notice, it's not legal for street use in California or pollution controlled vehicles. Just hit continue to accept, turn the key on, but do not start your engine. At this point, it'll prompt you to select your tune. Now, again, you'll have a couple of different ones. You have an 87, a 93. You wanna make sure you're selecting the proper one. Now, for our video purposes, we're only gonna focus on the 93 tune with our Air Raid combo. So I wanna show you guys the maximum that we're getting out of this Octane tune with our quarter air intake. Now, we do have a, a number of different tunes on here, but we're gonna find our 93 Air Raid race tune, and we're gonna upload that. Now it'll take a few minutes to get this process done. It'll basically save your stock file from your GT to the device. That way you can always revert to stock if you ever want to. It's right here on the RevX. From there, it'll go into writing the tune process. It'll load zero to 100 a couple of times. So you just wanna have some patience, let it do its thing. Don't turn your key off and don't unplug the RevX until it's done. It'll let you know that it's gonna disable the preloaded tune on the device, just confirm and hit continue. You also have the ability to change or make additional tune options, which essentially is going to be things like rev limiter, tire size, gear ratio, speed limiter, so on and so forth. We're not going to change any of those parameters, but if you wanted to, you can go ahead and hit change. We're gonna hit skip, confirm, that's your tune. And now it'll go into the process. It'll prompt you to turn that key off. Now back on. Saving stock data. All right, at this point, program is complete, so we can hit done. It'll take us right back to the main menu. Now I wanna take you guys through some of the features of the RevX device. And from the main menu, we already talked about programming the vehicle, but underneath that, you'll see gauges and data log. Now gauges and data log is something you wanna have your key on for. Once you get in there, it'll ask you to select your vehicle. So there's Ford Gas 07 and prior years. So we're in an 06, so we wanna hit continue on that. It'll scan the data log file and boot you into the gauges. Now this is a way for you to track live engine vitals. Now, as you can see, we have two gauges up here, battery voltage and coolant temp. But if you go to the right, you can start and stop data logging. You can record data. You can select previous data log files and select a gauge layout. So instead of monitoring only two gauges, we can go ahead and select one of the bigger ones, monitoring eight at a time. That'll give you a lot of data on the screen at once. So it's a good thing to take advantage of if you've got a windshield mount or somewhere you can mount this in eyesight. You don't need a number of gauges anymore. You can just track it right on your RevX and you can hit stop data log to go right back to your main menu. Now Vehicle Functions also has a DTC reader. Anytime check engine light comes on, plug in your RevX. You can read your trouble codes. It'll give you the code and a description. You can clear the codes and special functions would be something like a cam relearn. Hit exit. Vehicle info, turn your key on. This is gonna give you information like your vehicle VIN number, your ECU strategy code, things like that that you need in order to request new tunes. So if you ever wanted an update, this is a good thing to have on deck. You can see our VIN and strategy there. Device info will give you similar information, but this time focusing on the tuner, serial number, part number, firmware version. Device settings has a couple of unique features here as well. Check for updates, cloud file sync, upload data log to cloud, and Wi-Fi are the key ones in the device settings. Wi-Fi connectivity is pretty obvious. You can update your device and use the top three using this connectivity. So connect to Wi-Fi, you can upload your data log to the cloud for your tuner to grab. You can download files that your tuner provides for you on the cloud, and you can update your device. From there, you can also change brightness, orientation, and do landscape mode instead of portrait. 
I find portrait to be a little bit easier to use, but it's all personal preference. If you hit exit, back to the main menu, and that's your RevX device. That's gonna wrap up my quick overview and install for the Air Raid Race Cold Air Intake and Bama RevX by SCT Tuner Combo Kit with two custom tunes for the 05 to 09 GT. If you wanna pick it up for your early S197, you can do so right here at AmericanMuscle.com.